to it, uh, overshadowing to a fair degree the performance of the market late in the day. Julia Lee, huge fall in terms of uh, Fortescue shares, down about 14%, I think, in the end, off the back of a report in the AFR that they're looking for relief from their debt covenants. A massive reaction in Fortescue share price. I mean, I've got the S&P ASX 200 behind me. And this impact there, you can call it the Fortescue impact because that's the impact we saw from that fall and that tumble that we saw in Fortescue shares in the last half hour of trade. It was on the back of reports that Fortescue has asked for debt waivers from its lenders and also comes on the back of Standard & Poor's this morning putting Fortescue on a ratings watch with negative implications, saying that they, if iron ore prices were to stay below 100 and 10 US a ton until the end of the year, then we could see covenant uh, debt um, uh, debt uh, covenants being uh, breached um, in 2013. But if we did see prices stabilizing above $130 per ton, well, then we could see some relief there. And this is really about the iron ore price. It's about the weakness in the iron ore price at a time when capital expenditure for Fortescue is forecast to peak. And really, this exp expansion not only relies on debt, but also the cash flow coming through from its operations. And of course, with weaker iron ore prices, that cash flow really under a fair bit of pressure. At the end of 2011, we saw $3.7 billion worth of debt. Now, that net debt level is expected to get to $9.5 billion by uh, the end of the financial year, the current financial year, FY13. So capital expenditure spend peaking at a time when we are seeing weakness in iron ore prices and the uh, and the reports that it's gone to its lenders to ask for waivers on its debt covenants is really just going to raise red flags in terms of needing to raise capitals and that's a key reason why Fortescue's share price has really underperformed despite this bounce back that we've seen in iron ore prices since the low that we saw on Thursday. If we have a look at the potential uh, relief that Fortescue may find in terms of raising capital, well a capital raising it's going to be quite difficult to do and that's because Twiggy owns almost one third of the stock and it's unlikely that he'd be able to stump up the funds to participate in a capital raising and that would mean a dilution in his stake which he'd, he'd be very very wary of. The other possibility is the selling off of assets and we've started to see that with the sale of the Solomon uh, power plant and it could sell its rail infrastructure assets and perhaps get up to 2.5 billion dollars but really this report coming out in the last half hour of trade that tumble in share prices we are expecting to hear something from what's on on QE3 it, it seems the market very much um, moving on the, the likelihood of us getting it what about potential impacts uh, here in Australia we've often spoken about the almost the dimish, diminishing returns of each round of stimulus we've got from the US I mean do you see much flow on impacts for our own market if we did see some announcement tonight well, looking at QE1 and QE2 and the impact on the Australian share market, there have been negative implications um, because of the strength of the Aussie dollar. And really what we see with quantitative easing is a devaluation of the US currency, which is good news for commodity prices, good news for the Aussie dollar, but unfortunately bad news for a lot of Aussie earnings. And that downward pressure on earnings really puts some pressure in terms of the Australian share market, and we've seen underperformance. Just having a look at QE1, I mean, we saw copper prices soaring by 63%. We saw nickel prices up by 72%, but the Australian share market only managed to gain around about 7% uh, while QE1 was happening. If we have a look at QE2, copper prices were up by a much more modest 11%, while the S&P 500 was up by around about 11%, and the Australian share market actually lost ground during QE2. So while QE uh, quantitative easing will be good news in terms of commodity uh, prices, the flip side is that the Aussie dollar usually also gains, and that has negative implications for Aussie earnings and the Aussie market.